What's going on guys, Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. Today we're taking a close look at Felix Auger Aliassime's two-handed backhand technique and I'm going to point out a flaw in his technique that if he changed it could help improve the stroke. To find out what that flaw is, stay tuned because it's coming up next. All right, guys, so here we have Felix Ojealia Seems backhand from the back view. Footage on this one is courtesy of 12KGP Tennis. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel and subscribe over there. Excellent footage over there. But let's look at this fatal flaw in his backhand technique, and I'll talk about why it's such a big deal and how it hurts him in match situations. So let's look at this here real quick, guys. Everything here in the beginning with his stroke looks very good, right? So we've got a nice wide base with the feet here as he split steps. I love the width of the feet and how wide he gets on the stroke as he starts. Very athletic player, just like everybody else on tour. A lot of really athletic guys on tour right now. And a couple of good things here. Racket head above the wrist, very common on tour at this point on a two-handed backhand, and he has his hands also to the left side of his body right here, so all of that looks very good. He's starting to turn his body as one unit, getting the turn and then moving the arms back in that turn. He separates his left elbow away from his body a little bit, a little bit tough to tell from this angle, but that's what he's doing. And then we can see the left arm here is bent, okay, with the racket head still up, and the right arm, the front arm, is starting to straighten out a little bit more, and that's a very common combo that we see at the tour level. And then just moving from here, guys, you can see on this particular backhand, he's taking his front foot and he's stepping in on this particular backhand because this backhand is in the middle of the court. And when backhands are in the middle of the court, we're usually stepping in on them when we're already in the middle of the court, okay? If he was coming from this side of the court, he may step across and close off his stance if he was coming from this position. But since he's already here, the ball's in the middle, very common to just step right into it and transfer your body weight forward. From this position, we see some other good things here, right? He's got the chin looking over his front shoulder right here, so we can see that very clearly, chin over the front shoulder, and a full turn of the shoulders, okay? The front shoulder is turned more than the back shoulder, so we have this nice coil of the body, and then moving forward from there, this is where we start to get into a little bit of trouble, and I'm gonna compare his backhand in a little bit to Sebastian Cordes, who I think has a phenomenal two-handed backhand, and point out some of these flaws, but there's one very clear flaw that I'm gonna point out right here, and that's the fact that when he comes into his drop position like this, the racket head doesn't kick back more in this direction. It's just sort of this straight line drop down, kind of actually a little bit like Jack Sock, which is not what you want to copy on that two-hander. No criticism of Jack, but just biomechanically. And then from here, this is where the big flaw really occurs, and that's on his contact. We've talked about this a zillion times on a two-handed backhand. Spacing is very important to your power, but also your shot control and your direction and length, okay? And Ali Asim is too close to the ball at contact a lot of the time. Not every time, but more than 50%. And how do I know he's too close to the ball left to right like this? You cannot see both of his hands on the left side of his body. And that's something we've talked about in our video on Fabio Fonini's backhand and quite a few others. Sinner as well. You should be able to see both of his hands on this side of his body. And the only hand I can see right now at contact is his left hand. His right hand, that's at the bottom of the racket, is just in front of his torso. So that signals to me that he is jammed. And the big thing that suffers when you're jammed on a two-hander is usually your left to right control and your depth, but really your left to right control. So it's amazing that he's gotten as highly ranked as he has at such a young age with this technique flaw, but he has because the other parts of his game are so, so strong. But he's too close to the ball. So let's go back for a second. The right hand here, right, we can see it. It should not disappear in front of the body on most backhands that you hit if you have proper spacing. There are always some exceptions. And then from there, guys, we can see he shows the strings to his opponent as he follows through. He rotates his upper body and his torso, and then he finishes the stroke right over his shoulder, right? So the rest of it looks good. It's really the contact that sticks out. And there's one other thing I'm going to get into when we compare him head to head with Corda in a second. But real quick, again, we've got another 12 KGP tennis, and this time we've got Tommy Paul on the near side practicing with Ali Asim. This is Indian Wells back in March of 2022, so we're a little bit more towards the current date, right? But here, 
We've got Felix on the other side of the net, right? And I'm gonna show you from the front. A lot of times I don't show footage from the front, but one situation where I will show it from the front is with contact because it's important if you have the clips to use. So we see again, a lot of great things in his two-handed backhand as we go through, but what do we see at contact? It's what we just talked about, right? This is tougher to see because he's pretty far away from us on the screen, but what we do see again is the right hand, the bottom hand, is slightly blocked off from his body at contact, which again, signals that he's jammed. So this front view is actually really handy in this particular situation because you can clearly see that he is too close to the ball at contact. The final comparison that we're gonna jump into here real quick, guys, is him with Sebastian Corda side by side. So let's just jump into that real quick. All right, so here we've got Felix on the left and we've got Corda on the right. The footage on the left is courtesy of Tennis Legends YouTube channel, so make sure you give a thumbs up over there. Subscribe to his channel. Great footage here from Davis Cup here recently. And then we've got Corda on the right. This is Cincinnati footage from 12KGP Tennis. Again, like and subscribe over on his channel. So let's look at these guys side by side now, guys, and let's see what those major differences are in the stroke technique. This all looks pretty similar, right? Corda, again, if I could take anybody's two-hander of the young guys, he's got a really, really good two-hander. It's just so technically sound, and he's super comfortable striking the ball on that side. But we see a lot of similarities here. We've got the hips turned right here with Corda right. Felix is gonna use a little bit more of a semi-open stance, I believe, on this, so he's not quite as turned with the hips, but he does have his shoulders rotated nicely here, just like we see with Corda right. And then both guys, right, racket head above the hands here, leading through the beginning part of the stroke so that looks really good and then that back arm is still a little bit bent for both players as they start in this part of the preparation so let's look at the key differences here moving forward again very similar here for the most part guys Corda has a low ball at contact so he's really dipping his front shoulder to hit this ball Ali Asim is dipping the shoulder and looking over that with the chin a little bit but not as much because the ball will not be as low at contact and then coming forward from here, guys, similar position here with the racket head to the outside of the hands as they're both getting ready to drive forward and make contact. But this is where we see the big differences. Number one, Corda gets the racket head to the right of the hands more in this direction, more than Ali Asim. He gets a little bit more of this severe tip dip down on every single backhand that he hits instead of getting the tip to go a little bit more back and behind him. So his swing path is a little bit different because the racket's coming from here versus Corda's coming more from the right. It's a different swing path that's more direct on the ball and that's because he's too close to the ball the majority of the time at contact. So Ali Asim needs to fix this part of his backhand, as we can see with Corda here, get a little bit more of this tip back position than he currently has right now. And then leading forward from there, guys, we're gonna see how the hands are so far inside compared to Corda's, and at contact, we get exactly what we want with Corda, right? Where both hands are very clearly on the left side of Sebi's body, okay? So we can see that very clearly. With Ali Asim, a little bit blurry on the contact here, but this is the right hand here, and where is his left hand? His left hand is hiding behind the torso right here, and you can't see the left hand. So again, he's a little bit jammed. So there's a few things for Ali Asim to work on in his backhand, and I'll tell you right now, if he changes and fixes this backhand, starting with this part right here, getting the tip a little bit more this way instead of so far down like sock, and then he fixes the path towards the ball here so it's not just so straight forward with the hands and gets the contact a little bit further to his left, He's a scary player now. He's going to be unbelievably scary if he fixes these little kinks within his backhand. And I'm not criticizing him. He'd kick my butt upside down two ways from Sunday on a tennis court, no questions asked. But as an analyst analyzing these things, the job that I used to have as a full-time gig especially was to break this stuff down and point these little things out and then find ways for people to fix them and correct them. Sometimes that's through a side-by-side -side comparison like this, and other times it's just simply going to be through drilling and forcing players to do things with the ball that will hopefully help them correct those things without you really talking about it. But side-by-side -side analysis tools are made for a reason, and that's so we can fix these things and get the most out of a player. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video on Felix Auger Aliasim's 
flawed backhand technique. If you found this video helpful or you feel like you learned something today, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. It helps this channel continue to grow. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. I'll see you next time.